So now we'll get into the nitty gritty and start talking about the financial statements themselves. First, let's talk about, let's give an overview. One of the biggest banks in the United States, Wells Fargo specializes in banking, mortgage, and financial services. The data that it provides can be used in financial statements. Banks and other lenders look at financial statements to determine a company's ability to meet its current and future debt obligations. Uh, that way, they, if they grant a loan, they can see that the firm has the capacity, the assets and the cash to pay off its, its mortgages or its loans. To determine this ability, a short-term lender examines a, a firm's cash flow to assess its ability to repay a loan quickly with the cash that's being generated on a daily basis from sales. In other words, it could take and pay the loans off and still cover all of its expenses. A long-term lender would be more interested in the company's profitability, uh, how much it owes other lenders, and how those, len how those loans are guaranteed among, uh, very, in various ways. So that's how banks use accounting statements and, and one of the reasons why they're so very important to make sure that financial decisions can be made clearly and that you can trust the information that you have. So we'll start with the most important single thing to, to, to know in order to understand what how financial statements work. Basically, there's a double entry bookkeeping system and it relates to what's called the accounting equation. That is the assets, that is the total value of all of the things, the total things that everybody owns is equal to liabilities, which is the amount of debt that it has that helped buy the assets, and owner's equity, how much the people that own the company own of those assets. So the total, everything everyone owns, the assets, is equal to what you owe the banks plus what the owners own outright essentially the owner's equity. So that's that's the fundamental equation, and it's what balances the balance sheet, as we'll talk about um, in, in other situations. So what is the assets? Well, the assets are the firm's economic resources. That is anything they have that has value that they can use, they could do in transactions, they could potentially sell, they could use to create value in some way. Uh, there's called things called current assets, which we'll talk about later. Those that's like the cash you have on hand, inventory if you're a store or a manufacturing facility that if you have to you could sell it to get liquidity. Land is a long-term asset, as is equipment, uh, buildings, uh, as are equipment and buildings and other tangible and intangible things you might own. You might own the rights to certain music or whatever if you're a publisher. Liabilities are the debts that you owe other people. You owe the bank $100,000, you owe the bank $5 million, whatever, you owe that money, so that is subtracted from the assets. And when you subtract what you owe all these bankers or all these lenders, you have owner's equity. That's how much of the assets you can say you own, the net worth, if you will, of the total number of shareholders. That's the equation. It's double entry bookkeeping allows one to do that. Uh, you, you always put in, if you buy something new, you put in how, whether or not it's what the asset's worth and whether or not you borrowed money to get it or that it's part of the owner's equity. So there's an asset and a liability equities uh, entry, double entry bookkeeping. Um, this is, uh, as I said, the, the most important thing to realize is that the reason this, this all works so well is that mistakes can be caught because you're making two entries so everything has to add up and if there's an error then you know you made an error and you can go in and find the error and fix it owner's equity is the portion of the company the, the portion on the balance sheet that is owned by the investor so this is really how strong your financial position is you have a whole bunch of assets you have some money that you owe and how much the difference is how much how wealthy a firm is or a company is or whatever or an organization or a proprietor sole proprietorship whatever total amount of everything you own minus what you owe the banks or other lenders that's the owner's equity uh, owners sometimes put money into the company or that you could also say they leave money in the company 
when the, op the business is operating on a going concern basis, it's making profits, you leave that in there, you buy additional restaurants, you buy equipment, whatever, all that is staying in the company, that's still part of the owner's, uh, the owner's value. So let's talk about double entry bookkeeping. It's a system of recording and classifying transactions into separate accounts in order to maintain the balance of this accounting equation. To keep the accounting equation in balance, each business transaction, every time something is bought or sold or whatever, it's recorded in two separate accounts. Uh, in the final analysis, all business transactions are classified as assets, liabilities, or owner's equity. However, most organizations further break down these accounts to provide more specific accounts uh, to provide more information about the transaction. For example, assets may be broken down into specific categories like cash, inventory, equipment. It's often called property, plant, and equipment, or PP&E. Um, while liabilities might include bank loans, supplier credit, or other debts. So the, you, the, the transaction occurs, you go buy something, you put in the fact that you have it, which is the asset, and you put in the fact that you might have... have um, uh, lost or paid some money for it um, in order to, to uh, provide that transaction. If you bought it, you have to reduce the, if you bought it with cash, you have to reduce the cash account and then you have to increase the asset account because it's moved from cash into um, an asset account. You, you bought a piece of equipment. So you reduce your cash and you increase your asset account. If you borrowed money, you bought it on a credit card, for example, something like that, you would reduce, you would increase the amount of money you owe the the other creditor and then you would also increase the amount of money that you have in your asset account double entry that way if there's a problem as i said those those accounts have to add up and you could identify issues and concerns and that's how auditors can find uh challenging uh transactions in the uh, the various uh, accounts in any accounting system financial data passes through a four-step procedure it's called the accounting cycle the steps include examining the source documents, which is if you have a, an invoice or a transaction or a restaurant, you buy something, you sign the doc, you, you sign the bill or whatever, and use a credit card. That is uh, is analyzed. That's examining the source documents. Then you record the transactions in an accounting journal. Often this is done by, by software or systems these days, but way back when there weren't such things and people needed to do that. That's what bookkeepers did. Um, it's recorded in an account journal. Uh, posted and recorded transactions are used for preparing financial statements. So you have examining the documents, recording the transactions, posting the recorded transactions into the financial statements and preparing the financial statements. So these are the, this is how the accounting cycle works. Uh, to do that, you have multiple things. You have what's called uh, the journal which is basically a time-ordered list of accounting transactions in, in various accounts. Uh, you transfer that information from the journal into the ledger, which essentially pulls things together. Uh, now that's more, more often than not a computer program of some kind, uh, which provides separate files for each account and creates this uses this accounting equation. This process is known as posting the transactions from the journal. At the end of the accounting period, usually it definitely yearly, but also sometimes monthly or quarterly. You prepare a trial balance, you check it out and see how everything works out. A summary of the balance, the trial balance is a summary of the balances of all the accounts in the general ledger to get a perspective of it. The information in the trial balance is also used to prepare the company's financial statements, which is the formal presentation of the data. Um, in the case of public corporations and certain other organizations, a certified public accountant must attest to or certify that the organization has followed the generally accepted accounting principles or the, the, uh, the GAAP principles in preparing its financial statements. So that's where the auditors would come in, take a look, make sure that those four steps all occurred, review all the transactions uh, or samples of the transactions, and then certify that everything in the financial statements is the good stuff. It all makes good sense. So let's talk about the three um, 
the three main financial statements in the next few lectures, income statement, balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. We'll talk about those in the next three lectures.